One of the puzzling aspects of the different physical theories is the question of why should the laws of physics behave differently at different scales if there should be no absolute frames of reference in the universe as a whole. It's sort of the opposite to the argument given in favour of the turtle stacking model of suspension of the earth, where a person who believes that the earth is suspended on the back of a giant turtle is asked, but what suspends the turtle? To which he or she answers, simple, it's turtles all the way down. This example, though humorous, does reflect our need for sensible models to describe non-local behaviour, be it the position of the earth in space or electrons in the atom. If we were to accept, with equal but scientifically verifiable passion, how the fundamental particles that make up atoms, molecules and matter are themselves suspended to the rules of quantum theory, could we not also make a similar argument to turtle stacking, but in reverse, that is to ask, is it really quantum all the way from down to up? The correspondence principle states that classical mechanics is merely the classical limit of quantum mechanics, specifically in the limit as the ratio of Planck's constant to the action of the system tends to zero. So in certain interpretations of quantum theory, such as the path integral interpretation, we see the cancelling out of quantum effects by the separate particle histories causing decoherence with one another. So that in effect, we are expected to assume that we lose some of the quantumness in the wash, so to speak, from the microscopic world to the mesoscopic and macroscopic. The question that still arises, however, is that if quantum theory suspends the behaviour of atoms, matter and everything else from the ground up, then shouldn't there be some quantum effects that translate across the scales, even relatively small quantum effects? In this sense, this is the sameness problem in physics, where we can ask why do we not see some of the features that govern quantum effects reappear on larger scales in some of the aspects of structure of the universe? Unlike the turtle stacking analogy, this is not an unreasonable question to ask. After all, quantum effects occur at small scales, then there must be a lot of these effects that add up, even an ordinary piece of matter. Macroscopic magnetic effects, for example, is the amplification of the individual magnetic moments of atoms in a material, which are related directly to the quantum spin of individual atoms and electrons. If there is not a sameness across all physical theories, then we may be forced to admit that many of the separate subsets of physics are not branches as much as they are appendages soon to be glued together by some insofar witnessed unification. It should be recognised that just because we have a loose set of theories that we are able to grind up experimental data and churn out predictions does not mean we truly understand the principles behind the theory and we may be just working with the mathematical physicist equivalent of a black box that just only lets us witness the inputs and outputs in a blinding shut up and calculate fashion. In mathematics the application of fractals in geometry provides a clear insight to this concept of sameness being appar apparent across scales, being made popular by the mathematics of Gaston Julia, then both Mandelbrot and others. In fractal geometry, we see that complex geometrical patterns, some of which begin to imitate the kind of patterns we see in the natural world, they have this sort of principle of sameness, of general shape, operating at different scales. What is most surprising is how these patterns can emerge from simple rules of continuous iteration without the need for specific coded instructions to create the precise shapes of these patterns. In bifurcation diagrams, for example, we see patterns emerge from a combination of following a computation with a randomly varying term or set of terms added to it. The potentially infinite, often repeating patterns could not have been explicitly coded as infinite amounts of instructions would be required to be translated in an arcane fashion into such code. They arise from a balance between exploration and exploitation in the system, the core feature of a metaheuristic procedure. We can also begin to see that unlike the relatively abstract and idealized geometry that we're forced to learn in school about perfect cubes, spheres, cones and so on, this fractal geometry seems to create the kind of shapes and patterns that are seen in physical phenomena of the real world. Those of the shapes of mountains, river systems, blood vessels, clouds, continents, and even in the vast networks of galaxy clusters as seen in the large-scale universe. Shapes which are completely invariant across scales. It becomes apparent when studying the mathematics of scalar fields and how they couple that we see kinds of power law systems emerging from networks of scalar fields that are coupled with one another, and how similar this appears to the mathematics of discontinuous pass coupling, a metaheuristic technique 
that involves a defined signaling term with a randomly oscillating delay term to achieve an emergent equilibrium. In effect, we see a duality between such scalar fields and self-synchronizing quantum networks. The emergent synchronization and equilibrium of these systems is favored as being the energetic ground state of the system that the state evolves toward over time. Even in systems that are not explicitly programmed to achieve this kind of emergent adaptive network, such as naturally occurring quantum systems, for example nanoribbons, bosons and condensates, networks of quantum spins and magnetic materials to name a few, it can arise naturally by ha simply having the individual nodes exploit a power law for coupling with a randomly varying term. As we discussed in a previous video, many of the fundamentals of quantum theory behave this way, exploiting a very precise and simple series of, ex of momentum exchange rules with a randomly varying probabilistic term to create a kind of emergent quantum behavior that we see in the so-called pure quantum systems. If this is true, then there must be some quantum mechanisms underlying classical chaos in such systems. In our previously discussed model of the 2D quantum Newton's cradle, the balls are replaced by our signaling atoms or electrons, confined in rows. Adding additional momentum, such as a photon from a laser, can kick the atoms into motion, causing them to oscillate back and forth, just as in the classical Newton's cradle. Unlike the toy, however, the atoms in the quantum Newton's cradle can both collide and pass through one another because of the oddities of quantum physics, such as quantum tunneling. This leads to some of our histories of the different paths a particle can travel. Just as in classical mechanics, with our quantum Newton's cradle, as the strength of the interaction is increased, or continues over time, the motion of each of the cradle's atoms in the arrangement can be transitioned from periodic motion to chaotic motion. Now, this is the equivalent of the momentum space distribution of atoms approaching a thermal, e thermal distribution over a frequency of time, indicating that the system is reaching some new equilibrium state. In effect, we have synchronized the system of atoms to respond collectively. In certain quantum transition effects, with thermalization of groups of atoms, we also see the effects of quantum chaos, which create complex structure from simple momentum transition rules. A small section of electrons in a thermalized system, when perturbed, can cause interactions which have effects that iterate out into the entire system, even without direct contact between the individual electrons, non-local behavior in effect. The spectral properties of these non-interacting two-dimensional electrons in magnetic fields that are contained in a lattice can also create self-similar fractal patterns. These were first discovered in the 1976 PhD work of Douglas Hofstadter. Hofstadter described the structure in 1976 in his modeling of the energy levels of block electrons in magnetic fields. It gives a graphical representation of the spectrum of Harper's equation at different frequencies. The intricate mathematical structure of this spectrum was independently discovered by Soviet physicist Mark Asbel in 1964 and is sometimes referred to as the Asbel-Hofstadter model. The fact is that the nonlinear effects of imperfections and random behavior, in addition to the quantum exchanges during photon-electron interactions and electron-electron interactions, will inevitably lead to some kind of emergent chaos that is seen in classical systems, such that a small change in the position of an atom arrangement in a crystal lattice or the random excitation of quasiparticles in a moment, certain momentum state will inevitably lead to an emergent pattern, which will be drastically different to the original pattern. By creating a grid of 2D atoms, we can simulate this effect and make a relationship between the system behavior across the map of the fractal pattern. The grid is the energy surface the atoms are binded to. Mathematically, this is a matrix, the Hamiltonian matrix. It is the general principle of quantum mechanics that there is an operator for every physical observable, for energy and momentum operators, for example, which can be measured. In a system that is defined by a wave function, which is an eigenfunction, this acts on an operator. Then the system is said to be an eigenstate. The values for energy or momentum operators are therefore eigenvalues. In the 2D square grid, we can represent the evolution of the eigenstate as an emergent fractal pattern, 
with the pattern being highly ordered and dependent on slight tweaking of the initial conditions of the atom's topology in the lattice. For example, let's take the idea of 2D electrons in a, in a square lattice and then compare with a hexagonal lattice. In the arrangement of atoms, the momentum exchange rules are the same in each case. However, due to the position of the atoms creating changes in the small and randomized position of the particles, the emergent patterns will be completely different. Even though our change in the arrangement was simple, the emergent fractal nature of the spectrum shows completely different results. This is not decoherence of any kind. The system is still behaving as an isolated thermal bath. However, a local variation causes perturbations that reverberate throughout the network in a complex and adaptive system that reinforces itself. The emergent nature of the different energy level structure is also apparent, with the electron transition regime in the hexagonal lattice now appearing much more relativistic as compared to the 2D lattice. The onset of cha chaotic behaviour in the system can be used to describe how interacting quantum particles drive certain materials, such as graphene or superconducting crystals, to a thermal equilibrium. This insight is important to note as many technological devices, quantum technological devices, are being considered that rely on non-equilibrium quantum effects. Of particular interest are devices that use the cuprate high temperature superconductors, most notably BISCO, which has a crystal structure that behaves as a natural form of Josephson junction. These are considered one of the most promising elements in quantum sensors and as potential processors in the much-touted field of neuromorphic quantum computing using scalar coupling that can occur between separate Josephson junctions in quantum circuits. However, many of the design considerations of both quantum-based sensors and the hardware used for quantum computing seems to ignore the fundamental nature of quantum chaos, or else think that it's just a description of chaos that's somehow not important to the development of the quote-unquote new age of quantum machines. Fundamentally, it is still an unsettling definition as to why quantum mechanical systems are framed to be in the domain of what we arbitrarily call small, especially when we see effects in the, in the laboratory such as quantum entanglement, superconductivity, superfluidity and Bose-Einstein condensation that have nothing to do with being small, length or even time scales. So the foundations of quantum theory may not really be dependent on what we refer to as the size scale of the physical laws, but upon a more underlying factor that operates independently across different scales. The factor of an emergent quantum chaos that goes on to define a system's quantum behavior that is conceptually just as impressive and maybe even complementary to the concepts of fractal sameness across scales.